In this video, I'm going to show you how you can model in 3D this bar clamp, this little detail here. So I've got this 2D drawing here, and we're going to be using these dimensions. And our goal is to create a three-dimensional version of this. So I have a 3D model set up. We'll be going back and forth between the two. Now I have an example of the completed object right here, and our job is to go ahead and draw that in. Now to set up here a little bit, let you know what I'm working with. I'm in MicroStation 2023. So we'll go ahead and look at the about. You can see it's MicroStation 2023. It's version 2.71. Now there are some enhancements in this version and I'll be pointing them out. I've also customized my spacebar pop-up menu. So you can see I've added in a row here. They're called panels of 3D tools. And I've also added in some of my 2D tools and modification tools that I'm going to be using too. And part of 2023 is this new Recents tab where it'll give you a list of the recent tools you've used and in the preferences you can set it. I've set it up to 10, but I'll be using this to get back and forth between my tools. Go ahead and dismiss that. Also, we're working in a 3D file and we're going to be using AccuDraw. I've got my AccuDraw window right here and I'm going to be rotating the compass around to some of the different orientations. So just to give you an example, I'm gonna go ahead and start a line. And let's say I start a line here, you see the AccuDraw compass appear. Right now it's flat to my view. If I hit T for top, that rotates the compass to the top view. If I hit F for front, it rotates to the front and S for side. So I'm gonna be rotating the compass around as I work. I'm gonna be using other AccuDraw keyboard shortcuts. I'll be using the letter O that sets the origin. That's going to allow me to define a point of reference to go from. I'll also be using the smart lock, which is the enter key that lets me lock along an axis. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go back to our 2D drawing. The first thing I'm going to draw are these two circles. So I need those two circles in there. And then we're going to be drawing in these lines here. And then we'll be drawing in the circle. And then we'll be drawing these lines across there. So that's what our first goal is going to be. I'm going to go to my space bar. I'm going to go to my place circle tool. And I'm going to start my circle right here at the end of this red line. I have this as just a point of reference to go from. I'm going to do a data. I can see my compass appears. It's flat to my view. If I hit F for front, it rotates the compass to my front orientation. Now I can come up and the radius of this is going to be colon 1 one inch. Let me show you my working units too, just so you have an idea. I've added my design file settings dialog to my spacebar pop-up. Here, my working units are set to master units and subunits, feet and inches, and there's my resolution, just so you know what I'm working with. Now I'm going to draw my second circle in. So I'm going to move this up, and this is going to be colon 1.375. That's the radius. I data. Now I'm currently in the rendered mode. I'm in illustration. I'm going to switch back and forth between the rendered and the wireframe mode. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to right click. At my cursor will appear the view tools. Here I have my render modes right here. Right now I'm in illustration. I can also go to wireframe. I can do shift right click. I can set it right back to illustration mode like that. So I'm going to go to wireframe. I also can rotate the view, shift, right click, by using these view controls. They will appear when you're in a 3D file. So if I go to front, it rotates the view to the front. If I shift, right click again, I can go here and I'm going to go to right isometric. This takes me back to that orientation. So I'm going to quickly rotate my view around as necessary. Now, if I need to rotate it dynamically, then what I'm going to do is a tentative for me, that's clicking the wheel, and it depends upon how your mouse is programmed. I'm going to hold the shift key down, and then I'm going to hold the left and right button down, and that lets me dynamically rotate about that point. Now, your mouse buttons may be programmed a little bit different. So I'm going to shift right click, go back to my standard right isometric. I'm going to go to front view, and then I'm going to come in and draw in those vertical lines. 
Now, what I'm going to do first is you can see this line right here. I'm going to draw that line in first. And let's go to our 2D drawing because I want to show you there's a gap here. That gap is 0.16. And the width of this flange here is 0.42. So I'm going to start the line right here. No construction lines, no copying parallel, no creating elements that I don't need. So I'm going to go back to my 3D file, pan on over. I'm going to go to my Play Smart Line tool. I'm going to start relative to this point right here. I'm going to hit the letter O. I did not start my line. I've established a point of reference to go from. Now I'm going to move my cursor down, and the distance is going to be colon 2.375. I'm not going to data left click because that would start my line. I'm going to hit the letter O again. I've established another point of reference. I'm going to go to the right. And the total gap was 0.16, but we want to go half of that. So I'm going to show you the AccuDraw pop-up calculator. So I'm going to type in the total distance, colon, 0.16. I want to divide that by 2. So I'm going to hit the forward slash on my keyboard. That brings up the AccuDraw window, my pop-up calculator. I want to divide that by 2. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm now going to move the AccuDraw compass to that point. So I'm going to hit O again. That shifts the AccuDraw compass to that point. That's where I'm going to start my line. Now I've started exactly where I want it. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go a distance of 0.42. Data, there's that one segment. Now I need to go straight up, and I need to have it end when it touches the circle. So I'm going to hit the Enter key, Enter on my keyboard. That locks me on that axis. I type in N for nearest. That puts nearest as my active snap. I then can touch the circle, data, left click, reset, right click. Now I've drawn my line straight up and ended it when it touched the circle. Now I've got to draw this line in, start my line there. Same process, hit enter, locking me on the axis, in for nearest snap. I go to that circle, data, reset. Now I need to mirror these. Space bar, I'm going to go to my mirror element. Select these two. I'm going to mirror about a vertical axis. The vertical axis, I'm going to start here, is going to be the center of these circles or the center up here. Data, and then reset. Now I've drawn them in. Now I need to do some trimming. So I'm going to go space bar, and I've added my trim multiple to my customized space bar. I'm going to need to trim out these, the circle between these two lines and this part here and this part here. So I'm going to select all four of those lines to be cutters. And then I'm going to drag through to cut there, drag through to cut there, drag through to cut there. So I'm holding the left button down and dragging it. Now I've got it. I hit reset. So now I've got that part drawn. Next, I need to draw in my other two circles. So I'm going to go space bar and on my recents, because I've already used the play circle tool, it shows up on my recents. I'm going to start my circle relative to this point. Again, I'm going to hit the letter O, sets my origin. It's an AccuDraw shortcut. Move my cursor to the right, colon three. That's the distance to the center. I data. Now I'm starting that circle. I move my cursor up, colon 0.5, because it's a half inch radius. I data. Now I want to start my next circle from the center there. Might be a little hard to find that center there. But I'm going to hit C for center, just like N for nearest, C for center snap. I can then start my circle exactly at the center of the other circle. I move it up. This is going to be colon 0.7. That's the radius data. Now I've drawn in the two circles. Next, what I have to do is I need to put in these two lines right here, this line and this line here. So I'm going to start this line right at that point. I'm going to find it using AccuDraw. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to my Play Smart Line tool, space bar. And again, it's on my recents. Now I want to start the line relative to the someplace on this line up, straight up. And then the, the distance is going to be 0.25 divided by 2. So I'm going to move my cursor there, hit nearest. I'm not going to data. I am keep finding points of reference. So I'm going to hit the letter O, sets the origin. Now I want to move my cursor up, and the distance I want to go is the total distance of that flange, which is 0.25, divided by 2. So I'm going to type in colon 
Again, using AccuDraw's pop-up calculator, I put in the divide or the forward slash, I divide it by two, I hit enter. Now I've located that, I'm gonna hit the letter O again, moving my AccuDraw compass to that spot. I still have not started my line. I'm gonna move it to the left, hit enter, locking me on that axis, N for nearest snap, I move my cursor to the circle, data. No construction lines are trimming very quick. I move it to the right, hit enter, locking me on the axis, N for nearest. I move my cursor there, I data, reset. I now have that first line in. I'm now going to copy that down, the total distance of that flange. So I'm going to hit space bar, go to pop-ups, there's copy. Copy this one down, move it down, type in colon 0.25 data, and there it is. Now I have those two, but I need to trim out the circles. Back to my trim multiple. I'm going to select this line, hold down the control key, select that line, and then I'm going to draw a line dragging through here to trim these. Reset, and I'm done. Now I have my basic outline here, and I'm going to create a shape, basically a group hole out of all of these elements here. So I'm going to be using my create region tool to do this. And when you use that tool, when you create this new element, whatever your active attributes are determines the attributes of the element you create. So I'm going to change my active attributes because you see what they are now. I'm going to make it look like this. I'm going to hold the alt key down. I'm going to left click on that shape. That's now my active setting. So if I was to go to like play smart line, you can see those are my active settings now. So now I'm going to go to my Create Region tool, Space Bar. Again, I've added this to my customized Space Bar pop-up. I'm going to use Flood Method. I'm not going to keep the originals. But one thing is that red dashed line, if I was to flood this area, you can see that's not kind of what I want there. So what I need to do before I create region is I need to remove this. And I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to do Element Selection, so Space Bar. Element selection. I'm going to select the elements that I want to see. I don't want to see that. It's not selected. I do a shift, right click. In the top center is display set set. It's like isolate. Now all I see are the elements that I had selected. So I can clear the selection set. I go back to my create region tool. Now there's no obstructions. I data. It floods the area. I data to accept. There's my new part to bring everything back. Shift, right click, display set, clear, right there. Now everything's back. Now if I rotate my view, again, I'm holding down the shift in the left and right for how my mouse buttons are configured. I'm now going to extrude this element out. So I'm going to hit the space bar. Again, I added a row up at the top, and I added in here extrude. And I've got it set to not keep the originals. So I'm going to pick this element here, move it out. I'm going to extrude it distance of two inches. So colon two, data, there it is. Now taking shape, let's do a quick render, shift right click. You can see, hey, it's starting to look good. Now we need to put in that flange right there, or a uh, rib, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and snap here, and then I'm going to rotate around that point. So you can see I've got to put that in there. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to use a tool. It's called Protrude or Protrusion, but I need to draw a shape first. So I'm going to go to my space bar, go to my place block tool. Now I want to place the block at the very top of this circle here. And because I cut the circle up and we made it into a group hole, this may not be the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my AccuDraw I'm going to move my cursor to the center of the circle, hit the letter O. Again, that sets the origin. Rotate it to the front. Now I'm going to move my cursor straight up. I'm going to hit enter, locking me on the axis. Again, N for nearest. I go to the edge. I data. I've now started my block exactly at the top of that. Now I need to rotate my compass to the top, so I'm going to hit T for top. That rotates the compass to the top. Now I'm going to go across and I have to need one side needs to stop when it intersects that shape over there, that side. So I'm going to move it this way, hit enter again, locking me on that axis. Again, using the nearest snap, 
I go to the edge. I'm not going to do a data. I'm going to do a, a letter O, a set origin. I've now defined that side of the block. Now I put in my value here, colon 0.25, data. I have now placed the shape. It's not exactly where I want it. I need to do one more move. So space bar, move, and I'm going to move it by its center, data. My compass is in the top orientation, so it's set. I move it along this axis. I hit enter, locking me on the axis. I now can move my cursor down to this center point of this little ridge here. I data, now it's moved to that location. And if I snap here and I rotate around, you can see it's perfectly tangent to that one circle and it ends when it hits the other one. Now I've got one, I need to now mirror that. So I'm gonna go to my mirror tool. And if I look at my recents, uh, it doesn't look like it's on my recents. So I'm gonna go back to my pop-ups and here it is on my pop-ups. I'm going to mirror this element about a horizontal axis. So I'm gonna change that to horizontal. I'm gonna pick the element. Now, when I do this, my compass is currently in top. That's not the way I wanna go. So I'm gonna hit F for front. Now I can go up and down. And the midway point is the end of that red line. So I'm just gonna to go to the end of the red line over there. Data, reset. Now, if I go ahead and rotate my view around, you can see I have that on bottom and on top. Now to use the protrude tool. So I'm gonna hit space bar. It's added right up here. I added it again to my customized pop-up space bar. You pick the solid, then I pick the shape. You see a preview of the rib. I data to accept, data is the left button. Now I'm gonna do the bottom half. I repeat the process, pick the solid. Pick the profile, data, move this down. And if I go to use my move element tool, what you're going to notice is that's now part of the element. Okay, so it made it all into one element for me automatically. Now, the last thing I need to do here is the hole. So you can see I've got a hole down here. If we go to our detail, you can see the hole. It's right there. It's in the middle. It's half an inch up with a radius of 0.25. So let's go back. I'm gonna zoom in down here. We have a tool called Hole. I'm gonna hit the space bar. Again, I've added this to my customized pop-up menu. I'm gonna click on this. We can do different types of holes. I'm gonna do a simple. I'm gonna go through, because I want to go through both parts of the solid, and I'm gonna have it be a diameter of 0.5. So I pick the object, and as I move my cursor around, you can see as I go to each face, it's gonna allow me to put a hole through that because I have it set to face normal. I'm gonna go relative to this point here, hit the letter O, I'm in the midpoint. Now I just go up and I go up colon 0.5 and data and now reset, I have a hole that goes all the way through just like that. And the cool thing is if I go to my element selection and I select my new solid, you see these little icons these are features. If I press and hold the right button on it, I can edit that feature. Part of the properties of it, it's a half inch diameter. I'm going to make that 0.75. So I click OK. I now have a three quarter inch hole there. So that is modeling this clamp here and using AccuDraw, pop up calculator, and a customized pop up space bar. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.